All right, so like, like First Lady Carmen said, this will look a little bit different. This looks a little bit different than our regular service because it's to every man an answer or what we call a symbol for answers. So it doesn't matter what I know or what I understand, what relation I have. What matters is you learning, going out of here change and affecting your community, affecting your neighborhood. It says the end will come once the gospel is preached to the ends of the world. Well, you come in here listening to me uh, does no good unless you understand, unless you get revelation of what God is teaching us and telling us. Because there's someone out there, someone out there that does not know God, that they're, they're, the end of their life is coming. It's, it's coming. They don't know the day or the hour of when they're going to die, when they're going to pass away. And you carry the truth with you. Well, you need to spread the gospel. They need to know Jesus. So this is what we use this time for is it can be a subject that we've talked about over the last few months or it can be something that you're studying at home and you have a question on. We want to answer those questions. So we don't want you coming, getting out of here confused. Well, I don't know what Pastor meant. This, and this is time to ask questions. Amen. So our leaders and via website, they send in questions or it's text in. Um, we don't know pretty much who it comes from, uh, the Carmen may know here and there, I don't, I don't know how that goes, but all those Carmen just gives me a list of questions and they come in Saturday night and you expect me to stay up all night studying for your <laughs> questions? That's okay. Uh, we can get to them, we'll get to them. But, um, so we have a list of questions and then in between those questions, if there needs to be clarity, then please raise your hand and ask for clarity. So like I said, this, this serves just a little bit. Every first Sunday of the month, we do this, right? We're here to get trained up to be effective. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody agree with that? Yes. Anybody don't? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Just checking. Okay. So I am going to get started with the first question. And it says, uh, actually, it's two questions that two different people had, and we're going to combine them. Uh, the first part says, I want to know about John 6, 50 through 51, where it talks about Jesus is the bread of life. Mm. And then they asked, where do we stand in our church on giving or receiving communion? Uh, many people do not know how to do communion at their homes. And then another person asked, why don't we receive communion at the assembly church? And let me answer that for you. Uh, we we do don't do it unless it's real wine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'm kidding. Uh, As you guys know, especially our first time visitors, I, I like to joke around a lot. So I apologize. But yeah, go ahead. I, I, go ahead. <laughs> so we do actually receive communion at the, at the Assembly Church. Uh, what you won't find is the Assembly Church receiving communion in a traditional sense. Um, you know, the Bible teaches us that the power of God is made of none effect by our tradition. That's right. So we are not going to be that church that the first Sunday we put on our white gloves and we have communion um, and make it a ritual. That's just not a uh, mm -hmm. pastor's heart. That, I'm not saying anything against people that do that, but that's not where the assembly church goes. When we do communion, we take our time with it and we teach on it so that mm -hmm. everybody is aware of what it is and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, so you will see us do it a couple of times a year. But the other thing I wanted to bring out, Pastor, is that the call of the Assembly Church is different than a lot of other churches. Pastor's job is to grow up mature believers. So we are not an evangelistic church, meaning he doesn't stand up here and try to convince people that Jesus is Lord. He believes that that's our job, all of us as ministers, when we're out there on the that street. That Jesus is real. Yes. I'll, I'll teach that Jesus is Lord. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to convince you that Jesus exists. That I'm not trying exists. to uh, convince you that God is real. Right. That's what I'm not trying to do. You go outside and look up, and, and, and the stars will tell you. It says if we don't, if we don't uh, praise him, then the rocks will cry out. So I, I, that's what I won't convince you of. That's, I think, I, I think we're, we're in a, at a point with, along with technology and what we know today that we could not exist without God. That's right. That there has to be a God. So I'm not going to waste my time doing that. I'm not an evangelist. Yes. That's for someone else's. God called me to be a teacher pastor. And so uh, uh, we're, we are not like other churches where I'm very, very, very much non-traditional. I don't care what so-and-so church, so -so church is doing. I don't care um, how, uh, the oh, we've always done it this way. I don't do that. I, I, I don't, uh, that's not how I roll. And that's not what God's called me to do. So uh, God is alive and 
and, and powerful and he speaks and I listen. And so uh, the goal is to uh, get this into here. That's, yep, that's, that's, that's it. And uh, like, like Carmen said, uh, it's through our tradition. We make the word of God of no effect mm -hmm. and we never want to be tradition, routine or anything like that. All right. And so with that mm -hmm. being said, we have uh, the ability to receive communion whenever you are led to mm -hmm. by the Lord. The Bible says, do this as often as mm -hmm. you do uh -huh. in remembrance of me. So if we're not doing it enough for you, then by all means, you should be doing it at home. You should be doing it at home. You take communion over something. You got a contract or something you need to uh, uh, just to, to figure out or something that's, that's tugging at you. Man, you keep doing it in remembrance of him. That's right. His, his covenant that you have with him. Because he's, he's not a God that he should lie. Right? So be doing communion at home. That's right. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, and no. then if you don't know how, we will teach on communion. Amen. Don't miss that service because... Right. Uh, that's an important service. Right. So be here when we do do communion. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, any follow-up questions regarding that? We're good? Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next question. Um, Pastor, this question says, if God is finished mm -hmm. and he works through us, mm -hmm. how do miracles fit in if it is God that is performing the miracles? Um, go to Ephesians, yes, sir. chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. So if God is finished, which he is, how many of you guys know God is finished? Yes. God is finished. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, if you're sitting at home praying to God to do something for you, then you got a little bit twisted. You're a little bit mistaken. You're a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Because in Luke 10, 19, Jesus even said, power, authority have I given to you to tread on serpents and scorpions of all the power of the enemy. Now, we're not talking about you going around squashing bugs. <laughs> um, serpents and scorpions. Serpents is parenthetical to medicinal um, health. And scorpions is an attack or an outward attack, um, weapons war. So all these things um, uh, tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy shall not harm or hurt you. So that means the power and authority has been given to us to act. So while you're on your knees praying to God to do something, he's saying you do it. He told Moses when they got before the Red Sea, when they're leading the Israelites to, into Egypt, he told the Israelites, or excuse me, he told uh, Moses, you do it. Moses sat there crying to him and said, hey, we're here at the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army's behind us. What are we going to do? He says, why are you crying to me? Take the rod that I've given you and stretch it out. That's right. Why are you crying to me? That was in the Old Testament. How much more that you have God living inside you now? So it's you that does it. Now you can ask God for wisdom on what I am to do. Lord, give me wisdom. What, what, what am I to do in this situation? What am I to say in this situation? Who am I to talk to in this situation? You're blessed. You're blessed and highly favored. Power is with you. So, God is finished. He's given us his word. Mm -hmm. Our job is to put his word into action. Our job is to get into the flow of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a system. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to step into that system and so that system, his word, works on our behalf. So what kind of person do I need to be for his word to work on my behalf? i got to walk in love. That's first and foremost. Amen. If you're not walking in love, then you cannot hook up with God because God is love. Amen. God not only loves us, he is love. So if you think you can act, go around, act ugly, and be rude and mean to everyone, and then, and then think God's going to come in and work on your behalf, you have another thing coming. God is love. We must walk in love and forgiveness. Amen? Amen. So, the question is, if God's doing the miracles and he's finished, hey, what's up with that? Well, Ephesians 3, let's look at verse 20. Now, unto him, who's him? God. God. Who's him? 
God. Come on, saints. Who's him? God. I hear this side. I think I hear just Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Who's him? God. Okay, so it says now, unto him that is able to do exceeding, exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. He's able to do above all you can even ask or think. You're, at, you're, you're focused on something, and he's like, not big enough. Because you're focused on something, you're focused on something that just requires your attention, your strength, and your resources. Right. He wants you to depend on him. He wants you to go after the impossible. So he's able to do abundantly above all we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. But it's according to the power that is in you. That's right. It's according to the power that works in us. Mm -hmm. It's according to the power that works in us. Amen. So God is backing it, but you have to fit the bill. Are you a person of faith? Are you a person of love? Patience. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So God's hand isn't weak. He's able to do miracles. In fact, a miracle is simply speeding up time. Mm, that's good. A miracle is simply speeding up time. So if you were to live to a thousand years old, working, saving money, what could you accomplish? A lot. A lot more than the average person that lives to, well, supposed to be 120, right? That's right. So he just simply speeds that up. He puts a thousand years, okay, into a year. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's still God backing it. When it comes to healing, the process just goes faster. That's all. You have a broken arm. Okay, it's going to be mended in a day versus six to eight weeks. You understand what I'm saying? God is the God of the impossible. God is the God of the impossible. But you don't make him work on your terms. You have to change to work on his. You know, Carmen and I were talking, people come to church and think they're supposed to come in with their own ideas and their own um, agenda. And that's not it. Do you go to uh, Matt? You're in college, right? Do you go in there and tell the professor what he needs to do and how he needs to teach? <laughs> then why do we do that at church? Why? You're here to learn about God. Obviously, there's things missing in our lives that we need corrected. So when that correction comes, don't fight against it and get mad and upset. You know what? Thank you, Lord, for shining the light on it. I've always been a person that I like correction. I love correction. Why? Because I don't want to be stupid. I think no one in here wants to be stupid or ignorant, right? So then enjoy correction. Right? I can't, uh, I don't recall right now, but in Proverbs, it says, go after correction, go after wisdom, right? That's what we need to chase is, let's get corrected. Amen? Amen. So God can do abundantly above all we can ask or think. He's the power behind the miracles. But why miracles happen in some people's lives and not others, God's not picking and choosing. Oh, you know, she got wrinkles today. She didn't iron her clothes. She don't look cute enough. Ooh, she fine. I'm going to do it for her. No, God's not like that. He's not like people. <laughs> it's your love walk. It's your faith. <coughs> Patience. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. You really touched on something, Pastor, about the power that works within us. Mm -hmm. You know, how many of you out there are looking for a miracle for yourself? Do you know that when you are walking in the blessing you should never see a miracle for yourself because you don't need one because the blessing fixes everything. That's right. The miracles are for us to do on behalf of the world. That's, exactly right. That's God's power working through us right. so that we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Amen. We shouldn't be sick in here. We need to grow. And that's what Pastor's mm -hmm. doing, teaching us to grow us mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So change your thinking about miracles. Right. I don't want a miracle. I want to walk in the blessing so that the power of God is continually manifest in my life. And then I go out and I can show it and demonstrate it. That's our mission statement. And, you, and you'll be attacked. It's not saying, oh, I, no, we're in a world of sin. And you're going to be attacked. Don't think, oh, but it won't have its fulfillment. Yeah. If we're obedient. Yes. We must be obedient. 
So there's places we shouldn't go. There's things we shouldn't do. Lord say, hey, don't go over there. And you go over there. All of a sudden something happens and you're, like, you're, under, you're wondering why. Because you're hard-headed. That's why. It's no big mystery. You're hard-headed. <laughs> Who <laughs> was that? What Pastor said? Why do bad things happen yeah, to good people? Because good, uh-huh. good people do stupid things, right? <laughs> <laughs> or make stupid decisions. Right. That's exactly right. Any follow up today? Anybody have any questions on that one? Yes, Miss Chi. Oh, Mike's coming. Um, so my question is, what if the if it's not human, if it's not like a miracle through me? Like uh, California's in a drought, and then all of a sudden it rains, and there was. I, a I heard California's in a drought, and then what was it? It rains. So oh, it miracles rains. that happen outside of human intervention. Okay, so I don't care what the country goes through. I don't care what California goes through. I'm not going through it. Amen. I don't go through it. I'm exempt. So if if it's because of poor leadership and you planted a seed, vote, for that, you will reap the benefits of that. It's reaping and sowing. I didn't reap that seed. I made a, I made a biblical decision on who to vote for, who to put in power. I, I follow what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. I follow what the Word says. So California can be in a drought all it wants to. You know what? When there was a, that toilet paper shortage, did you know people, literally, people rang my doorbell without me asking, giving me toilet paper, calling me up. Hey, do you need toilet paper? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I got some extra. I'm in, I'm in your area. Boom, there you go. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. I yes. won't experience it. Yes. I don't know what hookup they got, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> my hookup is God. <laughs> so if there's a drought, if there's a drought, guess what? I'm going to have piles of water coming to my door. <laughs> God knows how, just because you can't see tomorrow, he can. Yes. We just need to let go and let him. Yes. Bless God. Amen. God loves you. Yes. I don't think you know that. Realize that. He loves you. God loves you. He doesn't want to see you go without. Yeah. God loves you. Make it personal. Mm-hmm. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. The all-powerful God loves you. Stop worrying. You can't see tomorrow, but he can. Give it to him. We're acting like he's not faithful. We're acting like uh, it's hit and miss. No. You're hit and miss. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to have a heart after him. I mess up all the time. But God knows my heart, yes. and I'm after him all the time, and I don't go without. Amen. I don't even know Johnson & Johnson. I don't even know S.C. Johnson. I don't even know these guys. <laughs> hey, put some aside for me. No, I don't even that. It will hunt you down. Mm-hmm. Even if there's a drought and it has to rain on my yard by itself, just a little downpour, it will happen. Hey, the earth used to be watered from the soil up. There's nothing to worry about. Stop trying to live by your own strength and your own resources. God loves you. Make it real to you. Make it real to yourself. God loves you. But I messed up. Who cares? Yeah, I was trifling too. We all were. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But he's faithful. He's not like you. He's not like your friends. He's not fickle. He's faithful to you. He loved you knowing you were trifling. Mm -hmm. So, just let go. Let go of trying to do it yourself. God loves you. You're not alone. You don't have to live by what your bank account says. You don't have to live by what you have in your pantry or what you have on the toilet roll. (laughs) God loves you. He'll provide for you from the smallest to the biggest things. We just need to put our heart after him. 
Not after man, not after people, after him. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Any other questions? Great question, Chief. Great question. Any other questions in regards to that? We had a question regarding the Bride of Christ, but I think Pastor um, touched on it last week. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? Um, the, the question, you read the question. Okay. I have always been taught that the church is the bride of Christ. However, you teach that the church is not the bride of Christ. Can you please explain that further? Does that need to be explained? Are you sure? Yes? Someone say yes? Okay. okay. Lord Jesus. Were you here last week? Mm-mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> She's the same one that said, how come we don't have communion? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Man. Okay. Uh, short and simple. Um, First Timothy. Ooh. Come on, Rodney. Come on, come on, come on. First. First Timothy chapter three. Oh my goodness, I knew I should have. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, let me just say this. God did not choose us. God sent his son, Jesus, to die for who? The world. All of us. Who did God choose for himself? The Jews. Israel. Israel. God chose Israel. God elected Israel. God's bride are the Jews. The church, we're the body. We're the body of Christ. We're grafted in. We're grafted in. We're, okay. Jesus was known as the only begotten son until he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Now he's known as the firstborn of many. So is Jesus marrying his brother and sister? No. We're part of him. We're the firstborn of many. We're in line. We're heirs to the throne. Now, Israel rejected Jesus, although he died for them too. They they rejected him. And so now they'll have a chance. Man, I wish I could know. I have so many scriptures in my head. Uh, Let me see something. I know I should have studied that out. You said we weren't going to go over it. No, it was, um, no, it was Romans. Romans, there you go, Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, actually the most, one of the most important books in the Bible is Romans. Yes. Out of those chapters, man, 8, 9, 10, 11 are just awesome. So, uh, Romans, there you go, praise the Lord. Uh, Romans, Romans. I think it's 11, but let's start at um, 10. Let me see something real quick. I apologize. Yep, 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 yep. Here we go. Come on. See? God is good. Let's start at, let's look at verse, or chapter 10. And let's start at Let's start at 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call, upon, uh, call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. See, my feet are beautiful, y'all. How shall they, where, where am I? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Mm -hmm. For Esaias, or Isaiah, said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So their faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes. We're talking about the Jews. Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? Well, first Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by foolish nations I will anger you. So these are people that are not even a nation yet. <coughs> Excuse me. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found on them that sought me. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he said, all day long have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. I say then, have God cast away his people? No, God forbid. He didn't cast them away. For I also am a man, uh, am an Israelite uh, of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Woe ye, ye not that the scripture said of Eli, uh, Isaiah, uh, how, how he make intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars and then left alone, and they seek my life. So they, they killed all these prophets, and now they're seeking him, um, Isaiah. Verse 4, but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to my, myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at, eight, at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. According to what? Election. The election mm -hmm. of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more, um, no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According to it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto, unto this day. Mm -hmm. And then if you skip down a little to verse 11, and if you, and if you go to the new living, that really clears it up. Okay. I'm reading King James and you read the new living. Okay. I say <laughs> verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles mm -hmm. for to provoke them to jealousy. So they come to know him. Yes. Go so did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient. So God made salvation available to the Gentiles. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. And then verse 12 says, Now if the Gentiles were enriched because of the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, mm -hmm. think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. When they finally, when they finally accept it. So Israel, the Jews, they are the bride of Christ. When Jesus comes back for his people, for his bride, we're coming back with him. Remember, faithful and true, written on his thigh. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Remember that? Right. He's coming. So the rapture is not the second coming. He never touches down. Well, the second coming, that's when he split Mount Olives in half. And we are with him, mm -hmm. the church. Yeah. We're with him to come get the bride. Mm -hmm. right? right? We're not there. We're not, we're not there. We're already gone. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... Study Romans 8, 9, 10, 
and 11. Study it. Read it. It's such an awesome chapter, uh, awesome book. Is it be anyone that's ascended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's it. Are we, are, is, does that mean us? We're, we're Gentiles. We're grafted in. So you're, you're, the, you're for sure a descendant of Noah. You're for sure a descendant of Adam. Are, are we descendants? Does that make us descendants of Abraham? No. Not if you, Noah, Noah and his three sons, Noah and his three sons and their wives populated the earth. Okay, so you're from them. From Shem came Abraham. From Shem all the way down. Um, actually, blacks were known to be from Ham. 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 Blacks were known to be from the descendants of Ham. So no, um, we're, we are not. We're Gentiles. We're grafted in. We're not of that lineage. So yeah, when you hear people talking about, oh, the black Jews and this or whatever, okay, whatever. Where are you getting that from? I mean, could Sham have done a line, uh, have blacks in his family? Yes, of course. Of course, but no one's keeping records back then of genealogy. You can't even go back past this country. And I did, I did it. I tried to get, go back it. We're in a swamp somewhere. I was talking to my mom about it. She's giving me all the background people's names so we can go back and do this ancestry stuff. I'm back in Louis in a swamp. I'm like, what? They weren't keeping track. So you, there's no way to know that. Yeah. But so who cares? I, I have a better covenant. That's right. I don't need God. I don't need God to bury me. Right. He adopted me. Yes. <laughs> Bless God. Amen. I'm adopted. Mm -hmm. So that's that. I'm sorry, Pastor. I have a follow-up question to that. Are the believers, like the Messianic Jews, are they, are they, part, of, are they part of the body? Yes. Yeah. Are they if they believe that yeah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and died on the cross for them. So are, are they part of the, and maybe I'm just getting technical here, but. It's actually very simple. You're, you're, you're overthinking it. Okay. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. you're grafted in. Right. You are the body. If you want to lean on your um, heritage, okay. Then you're missing out. Then you're missing out. Because what's grace for? Yep, and you're and you're you're subject to be fooled, tricked, and you will fall for the the, the deceptions of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. You'll be here with him. I won't, <laughs> but I'll come back and get you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Um, awesome. Okay. Let's I apologize on. for springing that on you, but you handled that well. You Pastor. know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Trying to blindside me. Y'all think persecution is out there? It's right here. <laughs> It's in your right house. here. <laughs> it's a brother that's born for adversity. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the next question is this. Acts 4.33 says that, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. First Lady mentioned, don't be trying to quote me. <laughs> First Lady mentioned it was because they were all in one accord. Can you please explain that more? Well, they're all in one accord. So let's take, for example, some people here don't have jackets on. Well, if everybody shared their jackets, then no one's cold. So um, great grace was upon them because when they came together in one accord, the needs were met. So it's really that simple. They shared the burdens. So one burden wasn't overly burdensome for one individual. So there, that was my question. So there's no mm. levels of grace. <laughs> Wait, you know. The way that I interpreted it was great grace came upon them because they were on one accord, but that's not, I interpreted it wrong, is what it, uh, right? I don't know, I don't know what you just said. She said there was, are there degrees of grace? Absolutely. Like you might have great grace and I just have grace. Yeah. They're all in one accord. So because so, they like, were on one accord, uh -huh. they had a, a higher level of grace. So here, so here, so um, let me put it like this. What's the difference between the church in Acts and this church here? It's real simple. They truly loved each other. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
God works through us. We keep looking for some pine of sky to come down. God, deliver us. Manna from heaven and all that stuff. You know, we, we keep looking for those type of things when God works through each other. If I release what I have for you, God blesses me even more so. And that's what they did with each other. And so grace was multiplied. That great grace. They just truly loved each other. This person didn't have a problem that this person didn't want to help them with. Oh, that's your business. That's your problem. I mean, no, it's not that. They weren't, they weren't selfish. They truly loved each other. They acted in love. And that's where great grace abounded. So, did I answer it? Cool. Next, let's go. The next question is... Wait, I'll pause it. Any follow-up questions on that? Any? Are you guys having a good time learning the word? Or is this just me having a good time? Are you guys bored? Well, I'm having a time up here. I love it. The word is good. The word is awesome. Amen? Okay. The next question is Revelations 5.12. Um, and could you explain that verse? So why don't we if put... If I read it. <laughs> right. <laughs> why don't we put... Um, start at verse 11. So... Revelations 5, start at verse 11, do 11 and 12 in the New Living Translation. You actually need to read the entire chapter, but we're not going to do that today for the sake of time. We got time. <laughs> Starting at verse 11, it says, Then I looked again, and I heard the voice of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders. Beasts. Oops. True. Beings and the elders. Beast. I'm in NLT. Oh, are you? Uh -huh. oh. Verse 12. And they sang in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and, and honor and glory and blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, so that's just the scene in heaven. This is, this is Jesus defeating Satan. Snapshot. And yeah, yeah, just a snapshot. A snippet. You know those reels, the shorts, they call them? Yeah. That's what you got. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, man. God was doing shorts before now. <laughs> before Snapchat? Before Snapchat and, and Twitter gam, Insta, Insta tweet. Insta book. Insta, Insta book. book. <laughs> God was doing shorts back then. Just hit, look, just, just what's going on? Man, isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Yeah. And he's able to write about it. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. I just, and so he, they're just writing that because the lamb was slain, mm -hmm. we receive these things, power and riches. This is what's his to give to us. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessing. Amen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered it, but yeah. That's just a snapshot. The next question, um, and this has to do more uh, with the church. And, you know, we wanted to answer these questions on our first Sunday here uh, so that you can get an understanding, just a reminder of who we are at the assembly and what we believe. So this question says, how do you decide who in the church is considered a deacon or a minister? What qualifications do they have to receive that title? And why are we required to call them by that title? Okay, okay, okay. So let's go to First, uh, yeah, First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three, and let's start at verse one. Okay, and I'm gonna keep reading until I get satisfied. Okay. <laughs> this is a trustworthy saying. If someone aspires to be a church leader. He desires an honorable position. Mm -hmm. So a church leader must be a man whose life is above reproach. He must be faithful to his wife. He must exercise self-control, live wisely, and have a good reputation. He must enjoy having guests in his home. I, that's what I struggle with. Y'all <laughs> coming to my house? I'm, I'm kidding. We, 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 we actually really enjoy you guys coming. Um, and he must be able to teach. He must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. He must be gentle, not quarrelsome, and not love and not love money. 
He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. Mm -hmm. For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? That's right. A church leader must not be a new believer because he might become proud and the devil would cause him to fall. Also, people, also people outside the church must speak well of him so that he will not be disgraced and fall into uh, the devil's trap. In the same way, deacons, say deacon. Deacon. Deacon Mark. <laughs> Stop. In the same way, deacons must be well respected and have integrity. They must not be heavy drinkers, dang it, deacon, I'm just kidding, or dishonest with money. They must be committed to the mystery of the faith, now revealed, and must live with a clear conscience. Mm -hmm. Before they are appointed as deacons, let them be closely examined. If they pass the test, which I did, mm -hmm. then let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives must be re respected and must not s slander others. Shannon, don't slander y'all. She, she speaks good of you. They must exercise self-control and be faithful in everything they do. A deacon must be faithful to his wife and he must manage his children and household well. How far am I going? One last verse. Those who do well as deacons will be rewarded with respect from others and will have increased confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. So why? Because the Bible says so. Mm -hmm. We want to respect the church leaders and Deacon Mark. Mm -hmm. You know, Deacon Reggie too. You know, he's still Deacon. He's just in heaven doing his stuff. All right? And you know, Pastor, as you read that list out mm -hmm. loud, um, I, I thought about our deacons, Deacon Reggie right. um, and Deacon Mark. Absolutely. And I can check off every, every box single. on that list for our <coughs> deacons. Uh, a lot of places will you show up and you know a little bit about the word and all of a sudden your pastor, your deacon, your minister, your apostle, they, they give you all kinds of titles. But does it right. line up? against that's the word. Mm -hmm. Can you, like you said, pass that test? That's right. That's amazing. And, yeah, and that's what you'll see. If, if, if there is to be another deacon here, they're mm. going to pass that, that list right there. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I am well pleased. Now, I never say I'm proud. I am proud of this. I'm proud of... Nope. Pride comes before a fall. Yeah. So get that out of your vocab vocabulary if that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I am well pleased, that's what the word God used on behalf of Jesus. He says, this is my son who I'm proud of. That's how we would say it today, mm -hmm. which is wrong. So this is my son with which I am well pleased. So I am well pleased with Deacon Mark and who he is. He is extremely faithful, extremely uh, dependable. Just um, I can count on him. Yes. So. Yes, I check off everything as far as with Deacon Mark. So you have earned and passed the test for the title Deacon. So that's why we do it. That's why we say it. Amen? Amen. Anybody got a problem calling him Deacon? No. <laughs> Who said yeah? I'm just funning. Okay. Next. Any follow-ups? Any follow-ups? Okay. We hate Deacon Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Yuloma. Should anyone aspire to be a pastor or a deacon, or is it like a you revelation can, or you, something? You, like you, that's a great question. It is a good question. You can aspire to be a church leader. You can aspire to be a deacon. You can aspire to have the gifts of the Spirit. Apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor is a calling. And I can point out everyone who wants that position and God didn't call them to that position. 
And that's a, that's a huge mistake because you love the Lord. Um, you're zealous for him. Um, but maybe he didn't call you to do what you're doing. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of people who are very extremely prideful, arrogant, and because they know the word, they think they're called to be in one of those fivefold ministries. Uh, that is a calling, and so you're gifted. So if you own a company, a billion-dollar company, you started from the ground up. You know all about the company, right? Mm -hmm. You have a secretary who is just faithful. She ain't going nowhere. She's been at your company for 20-plus years. Well, the press comes out. The press comes down, there's cameras, journal, uh, journalists, and they start asking questions. And you see the secretary down there on the steps talking. <laughs> You're like, what? No, of course she loves the company. Mm -hmm. She's a part of the company. But you have a public relations department or a public information officer that, is, that was hired or called to speak on behalf of the company. So they know how to put things a certain way. Remember, in, in that church leader says, know how to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, know what to release. I know I can talk to one person this certain way where they get it and not go too far where it confuses them and another way with someone else. Um, when people are doing what they're not called to do, then they're preaching or speaking from here mm -hmm. and not from here with the Holy Spirit. As you notice, I'll pause a lot before I say something because I don't want to talk out of here. Mm -hmm. I want to speak from what the Holy Spirit's giving me. And so I'll pause. And God doesn't know what to say. Um, good friend, Vic, he's sitting here in the front row. We meet often, and uh, we'll have discussions, and the Holy Spirit will just quicken my heart, quicken his heart on what, what route to take, what choices to make. He owns um, his own company, very successful company. Um, and, I mean, praise God, he's helped us. He's, 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 he's in there. When it comes to the building fund, that's, that's, that's the man right there. So you need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to re rely on him on what you should say and stop talking out of here. And like I said, you, you, you can, I can point out who's up there running their mouth <laughs> and who's speaking um, truth with the Holy Spirit. It's very easy to tell. My mom can attest to that too because we see a lot of people that are just, they're like, oh my goodness. It's like, you can just go in there. And my sister too, we we're raising the word. You can just go into a place and we're like, mm, this right. you know, I was talking to um, um, Iman. Iman, raise your hand. You know, first time I was talking to him last week and, and we, we had a conversation. He, he went to this church and he was like, oh no, this ain't right. This ain't good. And walked out. Am I right? So you, you, uh, you, can, you can see it. You can mm -hmm. discern it. And so, which is why we're unique. I'm not up here doing a job. I'm up here doing what God's called me to do. And that's my responsibility as a pastor and teacher. So great question. Thank you. Very, Very good, good question. question. Yeah. You know, Pastor, what people don't see, they see you on this platform and they see the lights and people, you know, honoring, respecting you. They don't see the they phone calls. They don't see calls. me cussing during the week? No, they don't see the phone calls <laughs> at <laughs> 2 in the morning. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. You know, the counseling, the, you know, they don't yeah. see all of that stuff right. that's hard. Right. That you, you need to be graced by God to do it Absolutely. or else. I mean, that's why we have pastors you know, Absolutely. committing suicide because oh, maybe yeah. they weren't, I mean, definitely they weren't supposed they were to be called. in that position it. Exactly and right. it was too much for them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You need the grace of mm -hmm. God to do what you do. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Yeah. If I didn't have the grace of God, I would not do this. No. Uh, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah. Wow. Very good question. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on. We got a couple you, more yep, questions. Two more, two more minutes. I have heard you say that you are not involved with the finances in the church, that you leave that to the executive administrator. But if someone comes to you for counseling, you inquire if they are a tither or not. Why does it matter if they are a tither if they are coming to you for help? Okay. Go to Numbers 23, verse 19, real quick. Got to get moving. 
-hmm. Numbers 23, verse 19. You put it up there when you get it. There it is. God is not a man, so he does not lie. <laughs> he is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? No. no, thank you. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? No. No, okay. Now let's look at Romans chapter 3. That's in the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's update this. Romans chapter 3, looking at verse 4. Okay. Of course not, Romans 3, 4. Even if everyone else is a liar, God is true. <coughs> oh, excuse me. As the scripture says about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win your case in court. Okay? Now, let's go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. While they're pulling that up, it's not that I'm not involved in the finances of the church. I don't keep track of who ties and who gives. I don't keep track of who gives what, because you will never have or try to put that over me. You won't have control over me in that way. Well, I'm a tither. Well, if you're using it as um, uh, leverage, then you're in the wrong place. In fact, I will tell you to leave. Get out of here. Money does not impress me. But your wrong heart, your bad attitude, will get you kicked out of here. So that's why I don't want to even have that be an influence of me. So it's not that I, I'm a very good steward of finances. I, I am very, very well. I do very well with money. It doesn't have me, so it won't be used over me. But I will keep it from in my view of who does what. Because I'm going to talk to you the way the Holy Spirit tells me, and I don't, want me to inter I don't want me to interrupt what the Holy Spirit is saying based on any kind of funds. So Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all your tithe into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house or in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, the Lord of what? Heaven's armies. And the King James Version says the Lord of hosts. That means there's an army waiting to back you, okay? I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Then he says, try it. Put me to the test. Mm -hmm. So now, when someone comes before me with issues and problems, I need to know, are the windows of heaven open to you? Or are they closed? The tithe gives you access to the blessing. The tithe gives you access to the blessing. You can't mock God. Oh, God, I love you. Jesus is Lord. You send all that lip, doing all that. You're saying all the good, right things, right? But you're not a tither. How can you expect God to bless you when you haven't met him? You haven't done your part. He's telling you, trust me. So when I'm sitting down and I'm counseling, the reason why, not all the time, but it will come up is, why are you having these issues? Mm -hmm. God's not a liar. Right? We just read that. Mm -hmm. God's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. So why is the devil whipping your hide? Why is the devil taking control and rule in your household? Mm -hmm. Why is the devil in your marriage? Why is the devil in your finances? Okay. That's the starting point. First tithe. Yeah. And then we can go from there. Yeah. That makes sense? Yes. This is why I may check on the tithes when I'm counseling. Not because you have to pay yeah. for counseling. Right. That's a very worldly way to look at something. That's offensive. So no, it's not that at all. There's some senior pastors that I know that you can't even get counseling with the senior pastor. You cannot get counseling with the senior pastor. You have to go to the deacons or associate pastors, which I still don't see in the Bible. I don't know where associates came from. Uh, if God called you to be a I can't call you to be a pastor. I can't make you a pastor. That's why we don't have associate pastors here. Deacons in the Bible, bishops in the Bible, the church leaders. But there's no such thing as an associate pastor. That's why we don't have it here. I do what the word says, period. I don't follow your tradition. Oh, well, who's your associate? Nobody. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> you want to put it that way. So 
We stick with the word. We stick with what the word says, period. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't look at the tithes. I don't do any of that. Um, people, pray, people pay for counseling uh, if, they wanna, if they want to um, have a meeting with the senior pastor. You want to meet with the senior pastor? Um, it's a $125 an hour. And now, now, the price, $125 an hour, that's accurate. That's very well accurate. Absolutely it is. It is. I'm not doing that. That's, 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 that's the dangerous place to be in. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, the treasure mm -hmm. that you're getting, if it's done right, is beyond that. It's priceless. And some people do it because they're so busy, the church is so big, and um, it's called throwing pearls of swine. You make an appointment, they're going to be there. They paid $125. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going to show up late. You know, it weeds out all that stuff. But that's the, that's the business world creeping into the church. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that. I won't go there. So as long as you're a member, as long as you're a member here, hey, I'm counseling you. That's no, no doubt. No doubt about it. I'm good. Even if you're not. I've never once charged anybody. Well, you know, I've never charged anybody, but I was doing some counseling in Orange County, and they insisted. I said, okay. I took it. I said, no, 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 you don't have to. No, I want to. Okay. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> Believe that. I'm not stupid. Don't, don't get me wrong. I said I was good with money. I, didn't, I don't reject it. If money, if money is a problem in your life, yeah. give it to me. <laughs> so you have like that. I don't have a wrong relationship with money. All right. Um, let's do a follow-up question because it's still regarding the tithe. Okay. Uh, it says, why do you have us bring our tithes and offerings to the front of the church instead of passing a collection plate around mm -hmm. like most churches? Uh -huh. Because I do not like, first I want to imitate the, the word as close as possible, but I cannot stand the feeling of me asking you for money. Oh, here you go. Money for the poor. Money for the poor. Money for the poor. No. It says bring your tithe. You, you lay it on the altar. So we put the buckets up here, and you lay it down. You come to the altar, and you give it. Yes. You come and give it. You walk it out. You act it out. You don't come here. Please. 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 No. And then, and I know personally, not just heard of, they'll send it around again. <laughs> Oh, more, more. Oh, we didn't reach this number. There's a guy who's come on TV. He's passed away now. He's been on TV, and he would act. He says, I'm not coming out until you give this much. Give this much. And he'll be back there counting. <laughs> having Dick and Mark counting. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming out until you get this much. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You got to be a. Uh. Your soul is in jeopardy. My goodness. So, I, so we want to be as, bibl as biblical as possible. We want you to offer it. We want you to bring it up to the altar. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? I'm not asking you for nothing. Your tithe is between you and God. Yeah. It's between you and God. It's got nothing to do with me. Some people like to show off and... Ooh. This is one pastor who... My mom, Iman, and my sister can attest to. They'll have a, if you give it $500 or more, line up here. If you give it $1,000 or more, line up right here. <laughs> For real. I went to that church one time. I went there. I went to that church one time. I'm like, oh, no. Walked out. I was like, oh, nope. My mom tried to make it work. She's like, yeah, he got these issues and that kind of thing, but he does it. And then finally she's like, okay, I can't do this. And she, <laughs> she they left. There's churches out there yeah. that will abuse it for money. Money is, money is low. Money is a tool. It's not something to hoard. It's a tool for you to do what? What God's called you to do. Yeah. That's it. Amen. Amen. We get so wrapped up in money. Money, 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 money. Well, whatever. Who cares? It doesn't matter. 
I got like $1,000 in cash still just thrown in my, my top drawer of my, of my uh, nightstand. It's gone down a little. <laughs> 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 She can put my underwear away. She see it all the time. <laughs> she might have snaked a couple of hundred. The but thing is, you wouldn't know because I wouldn't know. I don't check it. You're not checking yep. it every day. Yep. Oh, after I got the shot this morning, I got me you know, my boxes and I saw it. Whatever. <laughs> but it's not. I'm not trying to brag. What I what it is is, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the world to tell me what to do. Yeah. I don't just whatever. I have my own account that has nothing to do with the church, nothing to do with the house, nothing to do with anything. Just my account. And it's there for the Lord to give me instructions. Do this, do that. It's there. I know Vic, Vic Montez, wave your hand again. He operates the same way. That's why he has a successful business. Because he operates the same way. He has integrity with his finances. Money's not something to chase. It's a tool for, for, to be used for the kingdom of God. And when you misuse it, that's why you don't have it. So we're out of time, Pastor. Okay. Are you gonna? Is that a quick answer? Or what is this? There's one more question, but it seems long. So Wait, maybe we'll uh, save that for midweek. I know that God covers the righteous, His own, His elect. My question is: Will the rapture be post-trib post tribulation? According to Mark 13, verse 20. Go to Mark 13, verse 20, please. Okay. Am I correct to assume that the shortened days is a seven-year period of the tribulation rather than longer in order to spare life? No. Um, okay. So it says, I know that God covers the righteous, his own, his elect. So now you're, you're talking about two different people, two different groups that we talked about earlier. Mm. Um, the Israelites, they are not righteous. God chose them. Only ones that are righteous are the ones that are in Christ Jesus. Right? So the question is, will the rapture be post-tribulation? No, because we won't be here. There's an argument for pre-trib, mid-trib. Post-trib, we, we have a say. For us to be post-trib, meaning the first three and a half years is peace, and then the last three and a half years is chaos. For us to live through chaos means that God's word is hindered. That means I don't have a say anymore. So I can't go against what God has already put down. It's already going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can't pray against it. God, when the rapture happened, God takes his people out of the earth. That's what's happening. Those who have the word of God in their hearts, God will pull his word out of the earth. Come Because the word is in you, then it will pull. That's what he takes up. God doesn't pick and choose who goes. Yeah. He's taking himself out of the world. So does Jesus live in your heart, truly? Not just what you say, but it says confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And if you do, then your actions will reflect that. Mm -hmm. So does God live in your heart? If he does, that's what he's taking out of the earth. So that the devil, the false prophet, the antichrist can run amok. And we're not there to hinder him. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so that elect, he's making the day shorter for his bride, so that he has someone to come back to, mm -hmm. not for the church. Did I answer the question? I don't know. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. That was good. Okay. All right. So, I was able to answer that because we went over the elect before, so yeah, it kind of set it up. Awesome. Any follow-up questions at all? Like we said, this is. This Sunday looks just a little bit different simply because it's Celebration Sunday and we want to know that you're getting it. We want to know that um, as I'm spending the week studying um, for service on the, all, all the other Sundays, I don't know that you guys are out there during the week doing your part. The word is not for you to learn and keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? How many of you guys ever eat at a really good restaurant? Yes. Right? You don't even have to wait to come home and call your friends. You posted it, right? <laughs> Twitter book. Ooh, look at this. Bah, that looks so good. Look at it. Ooh, that was good. And you're giving a 
you're, you're, ta- you're um, checking in. You're checking in, right? Oh, I'm here at such and such. Yeah. Food is awesome. Food is good. You're telling people about it. Well, the gospel is good news. Amen. Tell someone about it. We want to make sure you're equipped and have an understanding of who God is and what he expects from us. Amen? Amen. That's what this is about. Otherwise, I'm up here preaching. It's not the Rodney show. Pastor Rodney. Pastor. No, it's, we're here together. Amen. We're together. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm excited. I'm loving our new place that God's provided for us. And I thank you guys for being faithful. Thank you guys for all your help and doing what you're doing. Ah, we'll be effective. Extremely effective. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. All right. Let's close go. it. Yeah, so, hey. Oh, yeah, let me close it. Go ahead and close it. Okay, so you guys all know my papa, who I, who I are, are, are named under. Um, you know, he's a man of love. So everyone here, I want, I want to focus you in on you matter. Every single one here. You all matter. Don't wait for the person next to you. You as an individual. Not you and the one you came with. You, your husband, your wife, whatever it is. You matter. You. Individually, you matter. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I don't care if you're still in high school or if you retired twice. You matter. You can be effective. God created you for a purpose. Once you find that purpose, you are unstoppable. No one can stop you. No one can stop you. The Bible says the gates of hell could not prevail against it. The gates of hell cannot stop what, you, what God's called you to do. But you must walk in love. You must love others. It's, it's, you have to. Mm-hmm. Change your attitude. Get rid of that negative attitude. Mm-hmm. Smile at someone. Stop going around humming and grumming. I don't care how hard work is. I don't care how hard your week was. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus is Lord. Change your attitude. Glass is half full. Oh, I'm so empty. Why is the glass half empty? It's empty. No, it's full. Okay? Full. And getting fuller. Bless God. I have abundance and no lack. I'm blessed coming and going. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Right? I'm the head and not the tail. That's right. Above and never beneath. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you. God loves you. And Jesus Jesus is is Lord. Lord. Oh,